All right, how's everybody doing? I'm Coach Ray. Um, I am currently a high school football coach at Tallwood High School and have been coaching football for roughly about 18 years in the Hampton Roads area. So I'm a little aged uh, in, in what I do. Um, so what I did was, for, because I've been coaching for so long, I've had interactions with tons of student athletes not always in the beginning of my career were they always positive. Some, um, it was a growth process for me to learn how to actually do the job the right way. And that's the way that God designed me to do it was to actually do it with care because early in my career, I cared more about my coaching career. So it wasn't until about, I wanna say roughly about three, maybe four years ago, um, and when I, I had started to transition years before that into doing more mentoring and about four years ago, I had a conversation with one of the guys that I used to coach who, um, had played for me since he was like 11 and he stepped away from football briefly. And so when I, at, when I was getting ready to leave the school that I was coaching at, which I was coaching at Maury and I was getting ready to leave for Tallwood, he came to me and he was like, I'm coming back to football. And I was like, well, what, why the sudden change? And so he said to me, and this is this is the honest conversation. He said, "Well, because you're leaving." <laughs> and I was like, "Wait, what?" And I kind of took it to heart because I'm like, "Well, what did I do?" But him and I sat down and we had a real in-depth conversation about how early on when I was coaching him, how I pushed the narrative of solely football and didn't you know, wasn't really working towards educating them when they were younger. So it was kind of like a, a revelation to the point of what are we doing here? Like what we can't call ourselves coaches because we just yell at them on the sideline and we're not putting these kids in position to be successful. So what uh, the blessing that God gave me was to be able to write and connect with student athletes and students as a whole, because I've, every job that I've done has been working with teenagers or students and to be able to help them mentally grow uh, in the areas that they miss um, certain things in. Uh, so the book Cheat Codes is was my first book. And I wrote that because I noticed a lot of kids were missing college for minimal reasons, but they were reasons that they didn't think were that big of a deal. So I started kind of doing some research and talking to some college coaches when I went on visits and tried to figure out like, what are some of these kids missing? And what it is is a lot of these kids don't understand that their social media is a big problem when it comes to college recruiting, even students, not even just student athletes, but students in general, um, don't understand that social media can damage opportunities for college, um, poor attitude when it comes to coaches, like colleges see that stuff, uh, college representatives see that. And what I learned was as far as the social media aspect was, they actually pay people to work on their staff for colleges to just search social media for guys they plan on recruiting. And so I was like, wow. And you understand that why a lot of students miss out because of their social media, their attitude, um, being neglectful in the classroom, attitudes with staff members, because college coaches ask these questions when they come and try to recruit kids, they ask, well, how is he or she in the building? Are they coachable? Are they respectful? Are they, what's their character like? These are questions that we're asked frequently when I meet with college coaches. And my head coach is very good with letting us as assistants talk to these coaches when they come into our building. So that's what the book Cheat Codes is. And every scenario in that book is derived from research involving that certain topic. And so I just created fictitious scenarios out of the topic to make it easy for teenagers to read or student athletes to read and so they don't have to feel like they have to go back and read a whole bunch of super big words for no reason when it's just straight to the point. I'm giving you a glimpse into situations that really happen, but you know none of the characters are real. And each chapter ends with a questionnaire for self-reflection for the student athletes to, or students. I, I keep saying student athletes, but I do for students and student athletes. Um, the questionnaire is for them to self-reflect and see, do they make these same mistakes? Do I do these same things all the time and could it jeopardize my future? So then we fast forward to the book that I'm actually focused on today a little bit more in depth is my new book, Own It, uh, 
for student athletes and accountability because I, I coach student athletes and I have, and I work with students who play sports and go to school. And this generation of kids tend to have a really hard time taking accountability for things. They have a really bad time with that. And I noticed that there's always some way to try to manipulate the situation to benefit them and more so than just taking ownership and realizing, hey, I messed up. What do I need to do to grow from this? So the book Own It was my second book. And that's what I wrote about. That's what I'm going to speak on today because I want kids to learn how to take accountability for their actions and need to understand that their accountability is more than um is more than just um them it's more than just them being accountable to themselves they're accountable to more than themselves they're accountable to the school's program they're accountable to their teammates they're accountable to their parents their coaches like everything that they do is is incumbent upon themselves taking accountability for themselves so if you want to progress you have to be accountable so what i'll do is i'll do like i'll read a brief snippet from the book uh on it and I'll go into a brief, I'll just read a brief little paragraph. Part of being a higher level student athlete is accountability and taking responsibility for their actions. It not only helps, helps with growth as, as a young adult, it also assists with how coaches look at you in the long run. If you consistently offer a rebuttal or get, get an attitude every time a coach corrects something you did wrong, you are not developing. As a student athlete, you must understand not, no coach should, should or hopefully will not ask you to do something out of the ordinary or to put you in harm's way. A lot of times coaches set rules and expectations to help you as student athletes become more disciplined. If a coach has a set of rules to keep things in order, yet you take it upon yourself to defy those rules for whatever reason, you, you, have, you have to be held accountable and a good coach would hold you accountable simply to keep control of his team. Also because the moment one person goes off the, off the rails and gets, and gets away with it, then the team starts to crumble from, in, from the inside. So that, that's uh, the ending of chapter two that I read. So it goes into the critical thinking questions after that. Um, have you as a student athlete ever went against a rule your coach has set in place? If so, why? Number two is, do you have a hard time dealing with accountability? And question three is, when your coach confronts you about an issue you caused, to yourself, do you always have a rebuttal? Uh, what level of interaction do you have with parents? Are the parents helping you teach the kids or do you have to overcome parents? Um, I have, I'm very, I'm better with parents. Uh, I do a lot of talking with parents now as a high school coach. I'm learning that this generation of parents is more involved than I've dealt with in the past. So you have to kind of be patient when you're dealing with situations like that. Um, I actually do a lot better in dealing with the parents, the ones with the good attitudes who understand how hard I really work or how hard other coaches really work. There are some parents who don't care how hard we work. They just want it that way and that's what it is. I, I, my goal is to help educate parents so that as coaches, we don't have to work too hard with uh, helping their kids um, develop. Do you only coach football or do you coach other sports? Um, I solely coach football now. For a long time, I coached I coached football, girls basketball, and I coached um, softball one year. That softball year was I, it drove me crazy. I'm not I'm not gonna lie to you. That year drove me crazy. I didn't know who I, I coached JV softball at that. Uh, yeah. Pop Kofi says, this is very timely. Do you see that your students are receptive to your advice since you break it down in a more relatable way? Yes, they are, ve they are, they, they are very receptive. And one of the things that I've been blessed to be able to do uh, with our head coach is giving me the, the, uh, the green light to develop the leadership program at our school. So one of the things I've been focused on as a mentor is to do leadership training with students. and. Um, do leadership training with uh, students. And so what I do now is I start developing young, the young men to be able to go ahead and lead their teammates. So on Friday nights, I, um, um, I found on Friday nights, I do the, men the mentor or motivational session for our students. And I've gotten some of our players on the team to lead that. So they're becoming a lot more receptive and they understand what I'm trying to teach them. 
James says, I coached football and basketball. I found football players are harder to coach, possibly because of the sport itself. What do you think? I think it's basketball is harder to coach. I think it's bad because with basketball, you're dealing with all these personalities and you're trying, and they're all trying to, what I call, get their shine. With football, everybody understands the common goal. I think with football, it's easier because if you lock down and hold your hold your ground as a coach in football, it's a lot easier. Basketball, you're it's consistently close proximity. You have more parents that are more aggressive with basketball. So whereas you, a coach, are trying to tell your player to do certain things, Parents are closer to them in basketball and can kind of defy, tell their, tell your player to defy you. So yeah, I, I prefer football over basketball any day of the week. Great. Any other questions or comments for Coach Ray? Any final thoughts for you, Coach Ray? Um, my final thoughts are this: uh, everything that we do, or I and and I've grown to do as a mentor and an educator, and I'm, I'm now getting into motivational speaking, I've done it for the last year or so now, is just focus on what the kid needs and not what you want. And I think that's our biggest thing when we're dealing with these situations is so many coaches are doing things based upon what they want and not what the kid needs or the children need. And that's the biggest focus for me is how can I help these young men and young ladies, even young ladies that I run across that like rec centers and at schools that I mentor is how can I help them reach the next level of their life? And most importantly, it's just care. It's just showing that I care.